to see how all that lays here in a minute. you go underneath the new strand to peg it into the top group. You got under four over four. Oops. undo it because I, I bumped the strand back. So sometimes working over your head is a whole lot harder one than where I normally am working on this. So. The nice part is and drop it down to where I can see it. This is like a quick release lark's head, basically. Okay, here's our two strands. Push them all the way up in the back. The top strand has to be captured. This is the top strand. And the black goes over on one side and under on the other side. Make sure that the next one you go under is the one that you just installed. Okay, now we have two strands that are going to go around. under four over four. Under four over four. And under four over four. You do not want to whack the tension and tension the heck out of this yet. Lift it up, put it back up. The camera can see it a little better. My shoulders don't like me if I braid over my braid braid over my head. So I try and share tips and tricks and people that are interested in whips. So 
happy to share information if you're interested in building whips, getting started, or been doing it for years. I've been doing it for several years. It's a passion of mine. I like watching things that are in my head come into reality, which requires some effort, but the effort's worth it, in my opinion, to get the result that I actually want as close to perfection as I can get. This is the top strand. I'm going to seat it because this was not one of the loose ones. This one goes up a few layers. And pay attention to the plating angle here. Okay, so the plating angle should be a little long of 90 degrees until we hit the next bump that's going to be true but the next bumps here optimally 45 degrees what what i'm generally shooting for so but it's harder to talk and keep any speed but I hate it when people don't talk in their videos. It's not very useful. I don't know if what I'm saying is useful to anybody, but I encourage you to keep pursuing braiding and making whips and things that you enjoy. My shop's always a bit more of a mess than I want it to be. And I can clean it, and once I start seeing what needs cleaned, I'll be cleaning forever until I stop cleaning. But paracord makes a less of a mess of the office than the working in leather. I can vacuum up most of the tidbits and try not to waste any of the nylon if I can. So we're at a 16 plate. Let's see what the see how the plating angles change from longer than 90 to right about 90. So I can go all the way down to here before I add so about four fingers now to add the next strand. And that will take it up to 20. And this whip is going to go all the way up to 32 plate. Four of which will be black and will make rings. So the rings don't touch with this pattern. They stay nice as long as you add four strands at a time <laughs> in the right places. But 275 is harder on my hands than the Whipmaker cord. The Whipmaker cord's thinner. The 275 has some advantages too. It's a little more dense. It's got more material. It's more round and it's got a higher uh, higher coefficient of friction so when you're seating the strands it holds on to the strands hold on to each other as you do it a little bit tighter than the whip maker cord the end result is a stiffer whip with more body interested in helping out people with how I go about doing things and whenever I happen to meet other whip makers I ask all sorts of questions as to why they do what they do how they do it or why they'd use the methods they use and I'm always experimenting and playing with the edges of what's possible for me as far as be able to actually stay consistent. And then of course when I get done with this I'll roll it not a tremendous amount. This whip is slightly oval in nature because the the slinker cord you start with is pressed flat when it's manufactured. 
and I like echoing that oval shape because it provides more lateral stability and uh, a bit of a natural bias that's bi-directional. But you have to pay attention to where the oval shape is and you'll notice these X's are coming down right on top of the previous layer. <coughs> And I wouldn't worry about these. These will move around on up here. But as I'm plating them, I'm trying to maintain the, lay them on top of the V's that are right below them. So each layer of paracord will add a couple millimeters in diameter on each side of the whip or four millimeters per layer because there's two each one of these strands is about a millimeter thick but it it's one mil, one layer two layer three layer four layer making it add four millimeters to a pass whereas the whip maker cord is a little less than a half a millimeter so four times less than half a millimeter means that you have less than a two millimeter increase in each of the hand plated layers. I like a single plated belly uh, for compression because the core is to keep the whip in tension and in compression to yield a, the result I want. Of course, you don't have to put plated layers in. There's other other ways of building up cores, but this is about as many cores as I can put in a 275, as many layers in a core as I can put into a short 275 paracord web. And it's extra work, is the other thing. The more layers you have, the more work you, you're putting into it. Okay, so... I always add strands when these spot the the colored strands I'm doing are accessible basically right in the middle so I can add the strands one on either side I'm going to tension these all off because we're four finger widths And this just mostly is snugging up above it a turn and a half or two turns up. And I'm seating these with about 25 pounds or 30 pounds of tension. And the more you do with 275, the more you'll get these weird calluses. And you'll wear the calluses off it every day as you plate more stuff. And they'll come back magically overnight after you've done it enough. Okay, I'm going to pin that off because it's time to take another measurement. Try not to push this pin through your finger, by the way. But you can see the pattern that's there. And you'll never see those gaps once we roll it. But I don't like having gaps, so it's, it's getting time to add more. Measure off the longest black strand. So I like to breathe vertically, so I've got a tripod so I can walk all the way around this whip and inspect it and work on it. And I also have a wall hook, and I use that sometimes to braid whips off of. But I like to watch the tension twist what I'm doing to see whether the tension is staying true or whether I'm pulling more with one of my hands than the other. 
there's a lot of things I do. And I'm constantly trying to come up with better ways, but a lot of times I'll try something.